me, 34M, with my wife, 33F, married 12 years, together 17. You guessed it, Reddit. She cheated with my friend. Sorry for the long post. We lived in another nation for three years before returning and deciding to go someplace fresh, rather than where we were originally from. This necessitated the creation of a new social network. We were finally financially secure enough to move to a fairly good area, so we did. The trouble with this area, though, is that the majority of the residents are dreadful. They're snobbish and either keep to themselves or have very tight cliques. This location is difficult to break into socially, so the wife is continuously pressuring me, the sociable one, to make us some friends, and it was really becoming a source of tension between us. We were both bored. Not only that, but we were always bickering over little matters, and things were growing worse and uglier. So one day, last August, we're in the neighborhood pool, and I resolve to meet as many people as I can and see what stays. I meet a few couples, tell them our tale, and ask them to a barbecue the next weekend. A few others came over, and we had a great time with one couple in particular. We all remain up until 2 a.m. drinking on the terrace. Great. I created some new acquaintances for us. Woo hoo and we became close friends, getting together every weekend. Our kids got along beautifully. After a few of months of hanging out, we even took them in a vacation to the beach with them. Everything was fantastic, so I reasoned. Like my wife, shy, introverted, and somewhat socially uncomfortable. The male in their relationship, let's just call him McDouche, was quite similar, but his wife, Mrs. McDouche, was more like me, extroverted and highly gregarious, and not nearly as douchey as her other half. So I realized McDouche is more interested in my wife than in me or the group bond. I just put it up to their similar personality types and go on. Now for the part you've all been waiting. For first incident, fast forward to Christmas, and we'd hired a babysitter for all of our children and planned a night out for supper and some good all-country western dancing. That's when McDouche elevated his douchiness to new heights. He wasn't actively after my wife, but it was almost as if he was attempting to give me his making strange remarks about how I should dance with her and he won't be insulted. I did dance with her since she was the only one who could two-step except me. After a few dances, he begins to make remarks such as, do you enjoy dancing with her? And it's very strange, but I feel like I move better when I dance with your wife. Do you feel the same way about Mrs. McDooch? And I was thinking, oh, this man is really inebriated. I shrugged it off, thinking that was all there was to it. After we all returned to my place to relieve the babysitter, things got more weirder. Everyone was having a nice time and getting drunk. We were all hanging around. The Christmas tree lit up. The wives end up falling half asleep on the sofa. Yep, it's a giant couch purchased in Europe that can hold a lot of people. I take a step back, perhaps urinate, and when I return, Big Douche is attempting to get in and spoon behind my wife. I'm like, what the is going on? And he's like, let's see if she notices. As drunk as I was, I said, okay, idiot. Let's see how you like it. And I pulled the same thing. Nobody made a big issue about it, and it went on for a few minutes before my brain kicked in and I realized this isn't usual at all. When I turn over, I notice McDouche attempting to, completely clothed, what I presume is his amazingly little to my wife's posterior. I thought this was going to be a game or a joke, but suddenly stuff became real. I assume he thought we were going to switch, but yeah, that stuff was short-lived. When I leapt up, he realized he'd gone too far. I told him to go grab his child and get the out of there. The following day, I receive a one-line text from him stating, sorry, things got strange. I was like, no, I'm not going to answer. After a few more days, I received the huge lengthy text about how drunk he was, how he went too far, how it will never happen again, and how our group relationship meant too much to both of the McDouches to be ruined by one drunk at night. I wait another day or two, and I can tell that my wife is concerned by the situation, and she doesn't want the friendship to die, so I responded to his SMS, but I also established ground rules. Keep your hands off my wife, don't be a jerk, respect my marriage even if you're intoxicated, and respect your own wife. Blah blah, blah he answers, agrees, apologizes once again, and assures me that it will not happen again. They leave for a week for Christmas to see relatives, and I'm relieved I won't have to deal with the awkwardness for a long. It continues through the text, effing text, second offense, so my brother lives approximately two hours away, and we decide to go see his family for Christmas. In contrast to my area, his is fantastic. Lots of others from the neighborhood come over to his home, 
and we all have a terrific garage Christmas night party. I see my wife is disconnected, but this isn't unusual. She doesn't like large gatherings of people. She's just off to the side, looking at her phone. When I inquired what was going on, she simply said Pinterest or something. I have faith in her. I notice a text come in later in the night when she isn't near her phone. Guess who? McDouche. It was just a punctuation mark. When I questioned her about it, she said, I don't know. So I inquire as to why they are messaging together, rather than in the group text as we have always done. She claims they aren't, and that it was a mistake. After a few weeks, everything appeared to have settled down. My wife had left her phone connected to the radio in the garage after we had them over one night, and I was cleaning up. Ah. Uh, here the words come over the speaker, followed by another punctuation mark. This is something I've seen before. After a few moments of thought, I send a smiley face SMS to see what happens. Smiley face reappears. Now I'm irritated, and I'm assuming this is how he checks to see whether she's available to chat. I'm curious how many ridiculous punctuation messages have occurred that I was unaware of. I didn't even remove it. I simply kept it on her phone so she could see that I was aware of their scheme. But since she had destroyed everything, proving anything was almost impossible. Nearing the conclusion, third incident, now that I'm aware of what's going on, I'm not my usual amazing self. I'm genuinely turning into the kind of accusing, insecure person I despise. We hang together a few times over the following few weeks, and during the Super Bowl weekend, I heard of denials, excuses, and explanations about how our marital issues are and nothing is going on. I somehow fall for it, decide not to be a jerk, and think that I've been making a huge deal. I try to be the nice person by taking my wife out on a date, you know, to get things back on track, drinks, food, and a movie all on the agenda. Wife suggests inviting the McDouches, and I grudgingly accept. We're having a fantastic time in a bar. Beer helps me forget my rage about the scenario, which she has persuaded me I'd made up. So we get carried away, and some more buddies text to say they're just down the road at another pub. We decide to forego the movie and instead meet up with our other pals, who are just a five-minute drive away. When we arrive, my wife finds she doesn't have her ID. So we piled into McDouchie's vehicle, and he drove us to the new location. So that's all. This is when it occurs. McDouche responds, Hey, I'll drive you back there and we can retrieve it. I'm having a chat with my buddies, and they simply kind of move away for around half an hour to four to five minutes. I'm trying to be calm as the night progresses. McDouche is attempting to remain up and socialize despite his wife's illness. So we left her off at her place and drove to mine to relieve the sitter once again. These two consents I'm not feeling this stuff, so we decide to call it a night. My wife enters the house to fetch his kid out of the crib and declares, I'm simply going to hop in the vehicle and go home with McDouche so he doesn't have to wake her by putting her in the car seat. I don't allow that to happen. I believe I put a stop to it. However, I did not. Whatever occurred occurred when they went to acquire the ID. The next day is the Super Bowl, one of the best days of the year. I can't even look at her, and I still can't prove anything. She's becoming irritated with me and essentially yelling that nothing occurred. I was messing around with my phone the following day when I realized that since we share the same iTunes account, I could turn her SMS on my phone. I have terrible reception where I work. So I do this, and she and I email each other for the rest of the day. She is an excellent liar. I'm beginning to think I'm a sense nothing gets through on text that day. That is, until I leave the office at the end of the day. My phone suddenly receives all of the messages from the day. It was 59 degrees. There's a lot of lovey-dovey nonsense. Is your spouse aware of anything? Many people have suggested that we take a break, that type of nonsense, but since it happened all at once, the text order was entirely thrown off. When I come home from work, I take the kids to a friend's house and give her one final opportunity to inform me if anything is wrong. She tells lies. I'm curious. When was the last time you talked with McDouche? She claims we saw them on Saturday. I hand her my phone. She has been apprehended. I determine that these two have been putting me through hell. Therefore, a group text for all four of us is in order. I post something like, Hey guys, my wife is cheating. On me. Mrs. McDouche is worried and asks if I need to speak with her. I told her no, but if she needs more information, she could ask her husband. It has to do with him. She isn't going to get into specifics about what transpired. I'm not sure how far they got. She did, however, acknowledge that they went, as if the emotional connection wasn't enough. I believe she realizes that if I understood everything, there's no way I'd remain. 
After Effects, I am still at home, and this happened a few months ago. I am hesitant to leave since I am the more stable of the two parents, and I am concerned about how splitting up the family may affect my children. I put in a lot of time and effort to construct my family and bring us to where we are now, and I despise the idea of tearing it apart. But I can't look her in the eyes with the same love and respect I once felt for her. However, just getting my kids half of the time seems to be more difficult for me. I've discovered that my wife and McDews have communicated at least a number of times since this incident. But now my wife behaves as though she realizes she made a mistake and doesn't want to lose me. She eventually recognized that she suffers from depression and anxiety and is now taking antidepressants, yet she still makes poor decisions in our marriage. I don't despise her. I despise what she did. I've lost so much respect for her, and although I still love her since we're family, I don't believe it'll ever be the same. Oh, and I've always been anti-divorce, but now that it's not all sunshine and rainbows, I'm seeing if I can rethink. Thank you to those of you who took the time to read this. I know, it's been much too long. Here's the query. What are your thoughts on what I should do? Should you stay or go? I'd want to learn how individuals who have gone through this and remained got through it. Oh, and I should mention that this isn't intended to be a sad puppy dog tale or a woe is me article. I am truly seeking assistance on a particular matter about a dilemma that will have far-reaching ramifications for myself and my family. Before the initial version was destroyed, I received some excellent criticism, and I appreciate those who previously responded. Also, as a result of this, I discovered that strangers will give you the truth whilst friends and relatives would attempt to play on your emotions. Two very distinct things. First edit. Update. Now that she's returned and the holiday weekend spent with family is over, it's time to talk to her about it. I have some strong suspicions that she's straight again while on her work trip, but I have yet to confirm this. I'm hoping to find a new direction in my life shortly. Thank you everyone again for taking the time and providing me with numerous angles I hadn't considered. Please say a prayer for myself and my family if you see this and are a praying person.